Monica Labs is a company that me and my partner Michael founded about a year ago, and we develop medical technology to help people in rehabilitation and in prosthetics. So we develop prosthetic limbs, uh, exoskeleton devices that help people get out of wheelchair, and a lot of different devices in terms of uh, loss of limbs and prosthetics. We try to make uh, devices that are 100% affordable, so it doesn't necessarily mean they're cheap, but they're cheaper than what is available in the market. And by making devices that way, you're not just focusing on the Canadian market and the US market, you actually, the whole world can purchase a device, somebody in Africa, Brazil, other, you know, uh, not developed countries. It all began because we started a brain control prosthetic arm, that it's, uh, you put a headset in your head and you think about controlling the arm, and the arm goes up and down. So we started with the brain signals, and then we went from the brain signals to body movements and biological signals. And with those signals, we can make people auto, uh, get out of the wheelchair using excellent, uh, exoskeleton devices and different robotic devices. So it really is the merging of man and machine to create new tools. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely the augmentation while they, they say it. It's, uh, it's uh, if you have a limb or a loss of a limb or something that's slack on you, use a mechanical device, electronic device to get away from your body to power the motion that was left over, the motion that you don't no longer have. Mm -hmm. So it's the interfacing of both. The prosthetic arm, it's, uh, it's something forced if you lost your entire arm because there's a, there's a lot of different prosthetics on the market, but they're all focused for partial amputation. So let's say you lost half of your arm, you can get prosthetic, no problem, because the prosthetic can be easily connected to the body because there is somewhere to connect. Mm -hmm. Usually they use myoelectric sensors to, con to control the prosthetic, which is a small sensor that goes on the skin, and then those sensors pick up muscle activity. But the problem is when you lose your entire arm, then where do you connect? You can't connect the prosthetic anywhere because there's no skin to connect the myoelectric sensors. So other techniques have to be created or invented for, in order for the person to control the prosthetic arm. So the first thing they created is a, is a surg surgical procedure called targeted muscle re where the surgeon cuts open the chest, puts sensors inside the chest, and then the prosthetic will fit on top of the chest. So when you think about, let's say, moving the prosthetic up, the chest, the skin goes up and down, and the sensors can pick up those signals and move the prosthetic. The problem with that is because it's very expensive, you have to go to the States to get the surgery, full body anesthesia, there's a whole lot of other complications with the procedure. So we try to make something that bypass the entire procedure, something that can just literally just put in your head, think about moving, no surgery required, no clinical uh, hospitalization or anything like that. How do people react when they see these things, when it, it is just, it, there's no big surgery required, that you just, you get it, you start using it, and automatically your brain your brain directs your limbs and all of a sudden where you didn't have when it's working. There must be amazing responses. Yeah, we got an amazing response so far and we went to uh, Toronto Rehab and Canadian Paraplegic Association and actually one of the managers at Canadian Paraplegic Association was a guy, he's in the wheelchair, he had an accent and he was giving us a tour around the facilities and he told us that the first two months after his spinal cord injury he wasn't trying to learn how to use the wheelchair or have to you know roll this way to go to the washroom, have to do that way to do a bed transfer He's trying to kill himself, right? And he's trying to find ways of killing himself because he couldn't leave with the idea that he would never walk again. So when he saw the device, I was like, wow, I know it's kind of bulky, you have to wear, but I can walk like today, right? And it's something that I could afford. I don't have to mortgage my house so I can, you know. So it's, we, we got a lot of good response from paraplegics, which is very different than people, you know, you just saw the device, oh, it's a, it's a robot, cool. Right? But when you get the response from paraplegics that, you know, somebody's seen the wheelchair and they're going to use your device, it's a much better feel. We hear a lot about man and machine merging into one as our technologies become smaller and more powerful, and obviously what you guys are doing is an amazing example of this. So a lot of things came up in the last 20 years, and uh, I think one of the most common things is that titanium plates. And that everything that happens in your body, you break a bone, you put a titanium plate. You have a problem in your jaw, you put a titanium plate. And then what happens is that metal is very, it's biocompatible, you can put anywhere in your, in your body, and it's not gonna oxidize or degrade or anything like that. If you really think about it, a uh, robot in a manufacturing plant, you know, building cars, that's all metal. But if you put some skin in the robot, or something that's biological like a camera, then it's a man and robot interface, right? So a person with a metal plate is technically half robot, half human, right? And I think that will con continue to increase and it's because people are looking for more longer lifetime and uh, to do more activities or different things that they can they can't do because of an accident or something like that. So I think they're always they're always looking for something that improves their quality of life. The biggest danger of that is you know how far people will go 
in terms of like changing organs and changing their limbs to get better limbs, so augmented limbs. So I think in when, when people start cutting their arms to get a prosthetic arm because it works better for them, I think that's a little problematic there because then you're going to have more robot than human. Right. And then you're going to be exchanging limbs, artificial limbs, artificial eyes. Instead of having your eyes, you're going to have 1080p cameras instead of your, your real eyes, right? So you, you start getting an advantage, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in sports, if you put a faster leg, you can run faster. So there are very, there's a lot of benefits, but it can be very dangerous in the, in the future as well. So how do you see technology changing us as a, as a species as a whole? I think it, technology and human beings are they're destroying evolution, right? We're not, it's, you can't really say that we are helping because evolution is a, nat is a natural process. It's not a science, it's not a theory, it's a fact. So, you know, it's, uh, it chooses the one that's stronger and more suitable for, for passing the genes to the offspring. And it's uh, once the human beings go there and they put a machine, you destroy evolution. It's natural, it's going to happen. I'm destroying evolution in my company. But it's, uh, it's necessary for technologi technologically evolving the human race, right? So, yes, we are changing evolution. But it's, uh, is it bad, is it wrong? It's, it's, we have to find out. But it's, it's, all, it's all about the people. If they're happier with using the device or the technology, I think that's more, it's more important than actually seeing the evolution in their whole. It's the same thing when you when you see an old movie in the TV, and it's uh, you see these people playing you know soccer in the street, and there's no video games, there's no color TV, and you're like oh how how could they leave right? There's no computers, no texting right? But the, the transition is so smooth that you don't really realize oh Jesus I have something in my hand that that's a robot right? So I think we won't we won't realize that people are actually becoming more robots. And what about you? Would you ever consider augmenting? I'll probably consider artificial organs because it's, it's one of the projects that we have. It's, it is, and it's probably there's 140,000 people in the U.S. dying every single year on the waiting list for, for let's say, a lung transplant, right? And a lot of people are dying for no reason because there is technology enough to build artificial organs. So I'll consider that. Mm -hmm.